Man, what a night. What a night. Wow. Um, you know, I don't know when this video is going to get uploaded or anything or whatever time this comes on. Because as I am doing this video, the um, other video is being uploaded for AEW. But uh, like I said, the war begins tonight. Like I said in the last video, if you've seen it. But now we are on the NXT review. Or some like to call it the championship night. And um wow, wow, they they went in. Let me let me just say that um NXT tonight. Which now I'm even questioning some things now, but uh pretty much especially the um the video to open the show was pretty good. They said it was um narrated by uh, what was it, Slipknot singer, um Corey Taylor, I think I read about. But um what was going to be this? Because it was called Championship Night, I believe, for um, NXT. This was almost like a takeover card. Especially with these title matches uh, coming up. Alright, but the um, thing to point out... Um, um, the point uh, to um, point out... Sorry, the point I'm trying to make that is um, going on right now. Especially in for NXT with this Championship Night... Is that how would they rival against uh, AEW and everything as they all both came on at the same time. And it was one thing that they put up that was literally right out. The, listen man, NXT brought out the big guns tonight. Okay. And right off the bat in the beginning of this show. What do you kick it off with? But the NXT title on the line as even Mauro Narlo said that this was going to be. Very limited commercials, and the first 30 minutes of this show was going to be commercial free, okay? And I recorded the show, and I, this is going to be the second one I watched, but um, like I said, this was a commercial free show uh, for the first 30 minutes of it. And what do we start off with? But the NXT title on the line, Adam Cole versus Matt Riddle. And holy shit. You know... My friend, he saw a little bit of this match before me, and he, he did see it before me, but, you know, I kind of saw it, uh, he was already hit, but, man, he, when he told me I had to see this damn match, holy shit, you want to see back and forth, I don't know if this was on some video game 2K shit or that, but, wow, these two just right out the box, both of Cole and Riddle just start going in like crazy, there was, like, so many back and forth moves, I don't know if I can even name them all for you, okay, because, do hit him do riddles going off with these freaking over <laughs> these kicks man with riddle man and hitting like several explorers on him and then a sin time and then a running kick for a two count pretty much catching kitchen catching cold in with a big high knee like a v trigger and then a fisherman's buster that looked crazy out there for a near fall even um rolling up with a german suplex that that looked um crazy because Riddle was just killing Cole at the beginning. Let me say that. He was like knocking Cole all over the place. And especially with his whole knee to the head thing. But Cole came back with a super kick then. Riddle pretty much. And this was like the back and forth thing again. Because he hit him with a knee to head. head. Riddle hits a super kick. Um, I'm sorry. Cole hits a super kick. Riddle just comes back with a crazy German suplex then. But Cole hits him with a freaking neck break. break with a, No, the last shot. I know his last shot move is nowadays that running knee, but before he did the, um, um, not like a neck breaker, but like a suplex into his, to his knee, that was like, that, that's what they call it, the last shot, that's how I used to call it that, I know they said it was a Ushi Garoshi, but it really wasn't, but that was just an insane sequence right there, Riddle went for the, the bro, was the, the bro off, the flying bro, I believe it's called, but, uh, Cole had his knees up then, uh, Cole pretty much uh, hit him with a Panama Sunrise. Fans chatted, holy shit. He went for the last shot, but Riddle fell to the ground then. Uh, Cole goes back up, tries to hit him with another Panama Sunrise, but Riddle catches him, hits him with a GTS, power bombs the guy, hits him with a running knee, and then that crazy bro moonsault, whatever twisted thing he does, the, the bro down, I believe. Yeah, bro down is called once again for another near fall. And like I'm saying, these two are just going back and forth. Riddle just gets back up, tries to take Cole out again. Uh, they're trying to get up on the ropes. Cole um, was at least able to take a riddle down for a second. Hits him with another Panama Sunrise. Holy shit, two Panama Sunrises. But Riddle pretty much um, 
you know, he countered after the Panama Sunrise, hits him in the bro mission. Uh, Cole was at least able to counter out of that, go for a two count then. Riddle breaks the hold then, but um, Riddle pretty much, t once again, he had Cole with that um, arm bar in his hand, the bad hand that he injured uh, last week. But Cole pretty much rolled him for a two count. Riddle gets out of it. <clears throat> Um, still tries to hold his arm, but Cole got out of there, and Riddle tried to come back at him, but Cole hit him with, with his cast, because if you remember, Adam Cole has a cast on his hand due to the whole injury last week with, um, uh, you know, Matt Riddle hitting that, um, you know, the arm bar on him going for his hand and everything, but he hits him with the cast, and he hits him with a big last shot, I feel like he missed it in a way, but he hits him with the last shot, for the win, but no, 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 it's not over yet, yeah, you, you want to talk about getting more crazy, and just putting out everything, it's like my friend said, it was lit, it was lit tonight on this show, what happens next, Finn Balor comes out, Finn Balor comes out, holy shit chance there, and, and when Balor came out, fans Shannon, welcome back, welcome back, and he said, as of now, Finn Balor is back and in X. T. First of all, Cole and Riddle just went fucking ham out there. You might as well just call this a freaking takeover match. And that wasn't even a full 15 minutes, and, and it felt like a takeover match. These two just went back and forth like it was crazy, all right? And, and you know, the finish was good, too. Some people said it gave Riddle out because, you know, Cole hit him with the cast. So that does count as something and gives him a reason. But Finn Balor showing up now to get in a feud with Adam Cole? Man, well, what you want me to say, man? That... What do you want me to say? Just bring it. Take over. Demon. Two former Bullet Club members. Um, I don't know if Adam Cole was ever the leader of the Ring of Honor one, but uh, two former Bullet Club members themselves going at it. And listen, we knew WWE was going to be bringing uh, main roster guys on to NXT because, listen, Finn Balor wasn't really doing nothing on the roster. And you can count everything he, he did throughout this year as what. Go against Brock Lesnar for the um, Universal title. It's like my, my, uh, my friend Steven said too. He got killed by The Fiend. His Intercontinental title run was very forgettable that they did nothing with the man. And most of the time, was he what was he doing? Huh? Fighting a waiter, I believe, at one point. And Bobby Lashley. And it, it just... It, it just didn't go really anywhere for him, really. It really didn't go nowhere for Finn Balor for a very long time. And... I think people are really now happy to see him on NXT just in general because he wasn't doing up on the main roster. So this is this is a move I have no problem with. Keep him on there if necessary. We got to keep him there, and he he's the Finn Balor of NXT again. Please, by all means, let's let's do it, okay? Because um, we don't know how long Finn Balor. I don't know if this is a permanent move for him to be on NXT. Or maybe he's here for a minute until after this feud. Because this is already a feud now. And I'm looking way forward to it, okay? But uh, like I said before, because with the draft coming, is he still part of the main roster? Will Finn Balor be uh, drafted to Raw or SmackDown? I don't know, okay? When that happens, I don't know. But right now, let's just enjoy him in NXT. I don't know if he's a permanent person on the roster, but he is on the roster again. So do I see Finn Balor winning the NXT title again? I don't know, because wasn't he like the longest reigning NXT champion, if I'm not mistaken? I don't know if that's true or not. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because he did hold that belt for a very, very long time, I remember. But uh, just the fact now you're going to see an Adam Cole versus Finn Balor feud. <laughs> you know, it's like somebody talking, man. You might as well just gave NXT to win the night after that. You just had Riddle versus Cole, and you just brought Finn Balor out there. You might as well just give him the win in this war tonight. You might as well just give them the, the first point in this long war that is about to come, okay? So NXT may have already just won this battle tonight, just looking. And this is only like, what, 20-something 20, 20 minutes in the show? Or 15 minutes? So I don't know what else to tell you. The match was just fucking fantastic, okay? Just, it was great. It was great, but there's so much more to even go off on, because, um, what do we go off on that? They got to hype up the women's title match tonight. Um, Velveteen Dream was out there then, as he had a new couch, and he was surrounded by women, and he talked about Roderick Strong and everything, and the North American Championship, saying, you know, uh, it took you all the Undisputed Era and everything to take me down, but he's never complained about taking down more than one man. Which, you know, a lot of people thought that was hilarious. But Dream Prima says, I want a rematch for the title. Okay? 
and you pretty much said that strong maybe you should consider the opportunity unless you're afraid to step out of the undisputed era of shadow and then i kind of like how he uh ended off and he said dream over snapped his fingers lights out so that was a um, a good promo from dream and i did like that everything was still purple throughout it so i, I did enjoy uh dream's promo i guess he will have a rematch against uh Roderick Strong maybe a takeover if I'm not mistaken, but uh, it could happen. We'll see what happens from there. Uh, they also talked about next week the Cruiserweight Championship will be on the line. Drew Gulak versus Leo Rush. Leo Rush did be only Lord Can last week to become the number one contender, so we will have that match next week. I'm surprised too. I'm surprised it didn't merge. Like I said before, I'm surprised it did not merge NXT with um, ah, <clears throat> you know. With 205 Live, I'm sorry, merged 205 Live with NXT, but I don't know, man. They still got NXT 205 Live after SmackDown this Friday, but I asked, like I said to people before, who's really going to stay after to watch 205? I, I'm i serious. I asked you this question, and who's really going to stay there after SmackDown? I'm serious. Who really is? But uh, they then moved on to Io Shirai versus Mia Yim, and a very good match. Now, if there's one thing I could say out of throughout tonight is this, and in a way, I thought this was a weird flow because I never really paid attention to the picture by picture thing, especially when SmackDown did it most of the time. But you're gonna see a lot of those throughout the night, especially on the USA Network, because of course they gotta get their advertisements. That was one thing I did know was they did go full screen a couple times because maybe with some advertisements that they had to do, um, you know, to um, to get things going really um with with advertisements and stuff so they had to play full screen on some of them while because i thought it was weird how the show kept clocking in and out when they were doing the side by side thing but they had like three commercial breaks through this match but this was a fun match this was a very great match okay i i enjoyed me and yim and io shirai io, io shirai picked up the win with the um the moon saw um yeah, and because fans pretty much were kind of chanting NXT in throughout this match too. So this was a very fun match to watch between Io Shirai and me and Yim. Especially they had a lot of good time out there. Almost 15 minutes. That was great. I liked it. I liked it a lot. <laughs> like me and my buddy was talking about during the show tonight. That's better than Nyla Rose and Rio. That, that was just about to fall. That was a way better women's match, okay? It really was. Um... Wolfpack in the house, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash in the building. So yeah, Wolfpack in the house. Uh, Johnny Gargano, uh, when he gets Shane Thorne. Uh, to be honest, I, I, I didn't even know if Shane Thorne was still in the company and that. I didn't even know Shane Thorne was still in NXT in general. You know, ever since uh, his tag partner um, Nick Miller left, uh, well, you know, Mad Mikey Nichols and went to New Japan. Uh, I always thought it was kind of weird. It just, you know, he just left and TM61 was pretty much over from that. I, I don't remember the reason why he left, but I know the guy's in New Japan nowadays. But, you know, him and Gargano had a good match. I don't think anybody really saw Thorne winning, but I think it was just... I mean, it was just a showcase match for Johnny. That's all it really was. Uh, that's, to be honest, that's all it really was. It was just... To showcase Johnny Gargano and him winning, the, you know, just winning a match in general, especially doing his uh, DIY kick thing for the end. So, you know, it was a good match. I, I will say that, but um, <clears throat> excuse me. Like I said, I will say that it was a good match, but you know, just a showcase really. Next NXT Women's Championship on the line: Candice LeRae versus Shayna Baszler. A very great match between these two. Wow, this 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 was great. Baszler pretty much, you know, telling uh, Shafir and Duke to stay back. Of course, we get the in-ring uh, introductions. Uh, Larray pretty much goes in like immediately out of the out of the box. Um, you know, Baszler uh, jumping out of the way. Uh, Larray hit him with an insiguri into a drop kick, pretty much in the springboard. Then they go to commercials, especially to the outside in the ring. Uh, Candice LeRae ended up doing three suicide dives in and out the ring. That looked pretty deadly, I will say that. It's almost like she's just landing on her. Uh, that looked crazy. Uh, Baszler coming back then with a gut wrench uh, throughout the match. Take her down, which they kind of went back to. Like I said, it's a lot of commercials throughout the night, but there's a lot of side-by-side -side, uh, screen also. Of course, you're going to see a lot of sleeper holds in this match. Baszler had did catch um, Candice in the uh, curfew to catch, but... LeRae pretty much, you know, fell on to her and, you know, tried to pin her. It did not work. LeRae pretty much, um, pretty much face planned her and went for the springboard moonsault uh, from the middle rope. But, um, it still did not work. Baszler caught her 
when she did that uh, springboard moonsault or the care through the clutch, uh, Lorraine pretty much did what she could to try to get out of it, but um, pretty much Baszler won. Now, I did like this match. This was a very strong women's match, let me say this. Very great, but I, you know, I'm sitting there wondering, is anybody ever going to beat Shayna Baszler? Because I can tell you three people I know that are probably going to be pissed tomorrow when they uh, tell me about this match in general, but... I enjoyed the match, but did I really believe Candice LeRae was going to win? I, I kind of was going with it because I said, who else y'all got Shayna Baszler to beat? She didn't nearly beat everybody. Okay? She's nearly beaten everybody. I know people say this is like the Oscar effect of, or just, you know, booking someone so undefeated for so long that who else do you have? Who? I, I ask you, who else do you really got around here? And, you know, someone brought up tonight to me saying, like, well, we got to use uh, Dakota Kai. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess so. If she's going to be the one to beat her, okay. Because a lot of people thought Candice, um, um, you know, uh, Candice LeRae, uh, a lot of people thought she was going to be the one, all right. Uh, they thought she was going to be the one to do this, all right. But she did not beat Shayna Baszler for the title, so they are still going with this for some reason to me, which I just kind of like, well, back to the drawing board, that's all I could really think of as soon as I saw that match, back to the freaking drawing board, so, Baszler retains, Pete Dunn went against uh, Danny Burch, a good match, uh, I will say that, uh, you know, just a, just a couple back and forths here and there with these two, I kind of like when Pete Dunn kind of does that whole, um, Wizard does that, um, what do they call that? Like a Vader bomb or anything. We you know run to the ropes and then you know um, pretty much jump off top of it. Almost like a swagger bomb, but uh, you know, Birch him in the back of the head. It ended up with you know, it ended up with Dunn pretty much in the bitter end for the win. But then pretty much the lights went out and then Punishment Martinez. I'm sorry, not Punishment Martinez. Uh, Damian Priest shows up and uh, pretty much takes him down with like his neck breaker like finisher thing. So I guess now it's going to be a, a feud with Pete Dunn and uh, Punisher Martinez. Uh, yeah, I still call him that because I'm still not with this Damian Priest thing all the way. But, you know, it, it'll be a good feud. I think it, it'll be good with Dunn and him. You know, Dunn's been racking up some wins lately. So I guess um, something will come forth good from that. Uh, they hyped up next week for Kushida versus Walter. I'm rising that for the UK title, but the match is next week. Uh, Kathy Kelly interviewed Adam Cole as she asked him, why did you use the cast to beat Matt Real? Saying like, listen, I'm medically injured. That's why I got the cast on, all right? I'm on with the last shot. Next thing you know, Undisputed Era sh uh, shows up then talking about Finn Balor. And, um, pretty much, um, Cole's like, screw Finn Balor, okay? We're focused on the night. The prophecy will still be fulfilled as the, everyone will still keep the, their titles tonight. Uh, Wale. Uh, was there for the Street Profits entrance. Obviously, Wally, Wale was the hype man. He didn't have a remix. He didn't have a verse. I actually thought he was going to rap off the song or something or a remix. Or, I don't know, have a verse like the Wrestling Flow dude. Some people, some people thought the Wrestling Flow guy was going to be the one to rap with Street Profits. But allegedly, they got some feud if you look on YouTube. But they just kind of had Wale come out there. And um, he was just there to hype it. That's all he was really there to do. He hyped the whole... Um, their theme song. That's the, he was just a hype man. That's it. No remix. No added verses. He was just there. But you know, Wally's always showing up in WWE half the time. So it it was pretty good to have him get the crowd up. You know, hype him up for the main event. I was actually surprised this tag match was even the main event tonight. That's what I was really um, kind of surprised at. Huh? I didn't think the tag match was gonna main event this show, but it did. But um, like I said, um, you know, Wale hyped the crowd up. Uh, it was funny that Ronaldo said it was for the culture, so um, he wasn't lying about that. But uh, Street Profits versus Undisputed Era, this was a good match, very good main event. Uh, of course, I kind of expected an interference to happen. Uh, you know, uh, Roderick Strong came out pretty much trying to knock um, Ford off the top rope, but um, Dawkins came back and speared him on the apron. Then Fish pretty much pulled him down. Uh, O'Reilly and Fish hit their finisher on him. And uh, they pretty much pinned them. Undisputed Era still retained the NXT Tag Team Champions. But Adam Cole came out to celebrate then as he held his title. But as the others held him in the ring. Next thing you know, Tommaso Ciampa's freaking music hits then. He walked around. He looked at the belt. So Ciampa is now officially back, I assume. Uh, you know, I think he's been back 
was he really back um in the time day because what he got hurt before takeover new york and i think they say he was gonna be gone for nearly like a year if i remember so how many months has it been since champ has been out like kind of going back all the way to april may june july august september october about seven months he's been gone in total so you know, because when he left, he was the biggest heel in this company, or in this this brand, really, of NXT, until, I guess, the Undisputed Era and Adam, you know, Adam Cole uh, took over. They were the biggest heels now, especially Cole, but now with Champa being back, I guess he's come back to reclaim Goldie now. So, you got two surprises tonight. Do I see this going into a triple threat match? Possibly, because at first I was going to say just Adam Cole versus Finn Balor. But now with Tommaso Ciampa getting involved and Finn Balor here. Shh, man, NXT just turned the notch up to 11 and we made this say a, say a triple threat match. I don't know what we're going to see from this. I don't know what feud is going to come from this first. But the fact that you got Ciampa in the, in the ending of the show and you got Fat Balor in the beginning of the show. Um, just big surprises was great. Alright, so... I look at it this from NXT tonight. It was a very great show. Like, the best thing in the match out of this whole show was Adam Cole and um, Matt Riddle. They killed it out there. And, of course, you got surprises from, uh, like I said, Balor and Champa. I thought the tag match in the uh, women's, um, you know, the women's title match was pretty good, too. I even liked Dio Shirai and um, me and Yim. I thought that was a very good match, also. Overall, NXT really brought the heat tonight. They knew what they were doing, especially in this two-hour show, loading this car, making it. They threw anything, okay? They were bringing out the big guns. They were just throwing anything into the wall to see if it stick and it stacked, okay? Stick, stack, whatever you want to call it. But they they were just throwing anything out there tonight. They had to bring everything they could out. And that's exactly what they did tonight, all right? That's exactly so, you know, overall, man, you know, I look at both shows tonight and, you know, man, I may have to give NXT the, the first point on this, man. I may just have to, all right? Shit, I may just start off watching NXT first next week if that may be the case, all right? Because, listen, I look at this. People can say it's not a war or not, but the battle lines have been drawn. And if it's one thing someone told me tonight, my friend told me is this. Triple H was never focused on... All the shit talking AEW, some you know, was doing. If you want to go from Cody or Kenny or uh, Tony Khan or anyone else that said anything about NXT or, or stuff, Triple H just said, "We're just gonna show you. We're just gonna put on a good show, and that's gonna be the end of it." I mean, he's not gonna go tip for tat. He's not gonna go back and forth. He's not really gonna say that much. He's going to show you why they're the shit, and that's exactly what they showed you tonight on TV. That they're the shit. So. Like I said, man, this is only week one. This is officially week one of this. So, I don't know what's going to happen next week with both these shows. But, NXT, man, they they brought up almost like a takeover level card. And you brought some big surprises tonight also out here. So, I don't know what's going to happen next. But, uh, like I said, week one, man. And we'll see what happens next week with both of these shows. But, I may have to watch NXT first. I dead ass may have to watch NXT first. So we'll see what comes from this. Uh, we really will. But other than that, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about TakeOver. I'm not TakeOver. NXT tonight in general. What did you enjoy out of this show? Because this this was a uh, this was a fun night. This was a very big night in wrestling in general. I'm surprised I'm even doing this review right now after watching both of these shows tonight. Because I watched it back to back. So I did get done with this one way or another and I, and I like I said I got two reviews up here so yeah check both of these out man AEW NXT man battle lines been drawn out here you can say what you want man it's real out here you gotta bring you gotta be ready man folks gotta bring out the big guns man firing shots out here you hear me that's what's gonna go so we'll see what happens next week but I am out of here I will see you guys later comment subscribe peace whatever I've said this millions of times follow me on Twitter at hood at night 890 I tell you man this is a great night but yes I am out of here you know it's me it's me the HWD coming at the news and reviews you know I am know what I do came with the show and I flow gotta see what's here gotta see what's there I don't know who's keeping score we just know that AEW and NXT went to war I'm out of here I'll see you guys later peace out